And of course, my next question was, where do I put Avogadro's number on here? On the top or on the bottom? Bottom, right. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That is the amount of things in one mole. One mole anything. One mole of aluminum atoms, one mole of donuts, one mole of trucks, whatever. If you got a mole, you got that number of things in it. It would be. Yes. Correct. Yep. And I know that because remember, I always put what I have down below this line. So even if I didn't remember what you just said, I can just logically figure out if I got atoms up here, atoms are going down there. And then what goes on top will be the mole. Okay. Now, he, this, this uh, calculation here is a little bit more challenging because you're dividing two scientific notations. But it shouldn't be a big deal if you utilize your um, parentheses. So if I go ahead and I do, scoot that over. This is how I do it. Parentheses 5.75 times 10 to the uh, raised to the 24th. I'm going to close that parentheses. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the division signs, start a new parentheses, 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd close it off again. Hit enter and I get my answer. Okay, I get a lot of digits there on my screen, but you guys know I'm not going to use them all. I got 9.5514 on and on and on. How many of those digits will I actually wind up using? Just three. Yep. So you can get rid of the uh, one four there and this will just become 9.55 moles of AL. And you're done. All right, you try B right now. Go ahead and give B a shot, and then we'll see if you're getting this. Anybody want to check and see if they got the answer right? It's okay if you're wrong right now. That's it, 6.23 moles of CO2. Okay, how many of you got that? Two. How many did not? <laughs> okay, three. Six point two three moles winds up being the answer. You got it? Four. Good. Okay, so one by one you guys are Okay. Alright, is this okay so far? Alright, so this is two of the types of problems. We got moles, let me shrink that down a little bit. Moles to particle conversions and then particle to mole conversions. Alright, two down. Two to go today. All right, but for the next two, what I want you to take out is this, okay? You guys got this set of notes from me a little bit earlier, um, a couple weeks ago. And the second set of problems that we're doing today is going to rely on a concept called molar mass. 
Molar mass is defined on the slide there for you. You can see molar mass is the mass present in one mole of atoms. So a mole of atoms is how many again? There you go, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That's a lot of atoms. But if you think about chemicals, that's the way they exist. They're made of very, very little tiny parts. So if you have a mole of them, maybe that would be enough of a sample that you could use in a chemistry lab. Now, where do you find molar mass of something? We find it right on the periodic table. Okay, This is the number we haven't dealt with too much yet. But it's the number under the element symbol. Okay, So the next blank is under. It's under the element symbol. So if you take a look at your periodic table right now, you can clearly see there is a number underneath each of the elements. For example, under copper, 63.55 is the weight of Avogadro's number of copper atoms. 65.39 is the weight of Avogadro's number of zinc atoms. Yes, ma'am? What is the other number? Down here? Yes. Electronegativity. Okay, and, and if you remember that, like up here, we, electronegativity, that is how much pull a specific element has for electrons. The further you go to the right of the periodic table, the greater the pull. The more you go to the left of the periodic table, the less. Okay? All right, so we're dealing with this molar mass number today. Now, this number on the periodic table is given in AMUs, atomic mass units. Now we can't measure things in a lab in atomic mass units because if you tried to measure the weight of four atoms and put them on that scale you'd have a really hard time. That's how small they are. So instead we use the molar mass because it's given in grams. So we want to put grams down there. Grams is something we can deal with okay, in the laboratory. Because we know from our previous lab that we can put things on that scale and we'll get an answer in grams, just like chemicals from a stock room. And that's going to help us in chemistry, um, not only in the lab, but as we do these conversion problems. So the next type of conversion problem is going to be found on page 316. Three sixteen, and this is going to be called mole to mass conversion. And these are even easier than the last type we did. But you got to have your periodic table out for these. That's that's the key. All right, in number eleven A, we have three point five seven moles of aluminum. And what we got to figure out is how much does this weigh? What is the mass of 3.57 moles of aluminum? Solving it, set it up just like all the rest of the problems. Dimensional analysis style, multiplication sign, division line. You tell me, just knowing what we know, what's going down beneath this line? Moles of AL, absolutely. What do we want? grams because we want mass. So we want grams of aluminum. G and then the symbol for aluminum. Now, we had said that a mole of anything has Avogadro's number of particles in it. But what we also know is that molar mass is the mass present in one mole of atoms. So if I have one mole of aluminum, what does one mole of aluminum weigh? Where would we find it? Periodic table. You tell me. What is the weight of a mole of aluminum atoms? There you go. 26.98. Now, we can get rid of like units again. Cross cancel them. Now, look how much easier this problem is. Okay, we got a simple multiplication problem. 3.57 times 26.98. And we get an answer. Now, my screen is reading 96.3186. Should I leave that like that or no? No. 
we know we got to factor in significant figures. How many should I report in this answer? Three, right? Should I put 96.3 like that? Why? What's wrong with that? There you go. Got to be in proper scientific notation. 9.63 times 10 to the...